Uh, my name is Arun Ross. I'm an associate professor at the uh, Lane Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering at uh, West Virginia University. Um, and uh, I'm also affiliated with the Center for Identification Technology Research, uh, which is a National Science Foundation Center uh, focusing on uh, um, identification technologies. Um, I work with my students and other collaborators on a variety of biometric technology problems. Um, uh, some of the problems include uh, multispectral biometric analysis, uh, fingerprint indexing, uh, face indexing, um, iris uh, biometrics, um, and also visual cryptography, um, all of which pertain to some core issues in uh, biometrics. I see uh, a number of uh, interesting research areas. Uh, one is uh, biometric template protection, uh, because people are concerned when they provide their biometric uh, traits as to where they're located, where they will be stored, and what kind of protection in terms of security and privacy is accorded to those biometric templates. Um, so I see template security and privacy as uh, one important area of research. Another important area of research is um, human identification at a distance. Um, and so uh, currently, uh, most technologies can deal very well uh, with uh, individuals who are cooperative and who are in close proximity uh, to the biometric sensor. But now there is increasing interest in recognizing people at a distance, uh, people who are non-cooperative, um, and in unconstrained environments uh, where the lighting can change um, quite a bit, where factors such as uh, uh, the human pose with respect to the sensor uh, can change rapidly and so forth. Um, and so those represent uh, highly unconstrained environments and the ability to perform human identification uh, would benefit both law enforcement agencies um, as well as other um, federal um, agencies. Yeah, I see um, uh, a couple of areas uh, that have developed rapidly. Um, one is in the uh, field of iris biometrics. Um, again, as I stated before, uh, there is uh, interest in recognizing individuals at a distance, but using the uh, iris entity. And that's a challenging problem uh, because the iris is a moving object within a moving object, the eye, within a moving object, which is the head, and then within another moving object, which is the human body. And so the ability to extract the iris from a distance and perform identification remains to be an interesting area of research. And now there are multiple research groups which are engaged in that. Um, other important uh, areas including, include uh, biometric fusion, which is uh, how do you consolidate the evidence presented by multiple biometric traits. Uh, so if you have information pertaining to the face, uh, fingerprint, and iris, uh, now how do you combine this information in order to assess the identity of a subject? Uh, so biometric fusion is an, is an interesting area of research and is also impacting uh, the way in which biometric systems um, operate. We do have laptops um, already equipped with uh, biometric sensors. Uh, and um, uh, very soon as we perform transactions over the web, it is going to become very important to establish a person's identity in a reliable and robust manner. Uh, so remote authentication uh, may be based on uh, face recognition over webcams or voice recognition uh, over voice channels uh, might become uh, 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 important as, as well as uh, more practical uh, in, the, uh, in the years to come. Um, Multi-biometric systems have several advantages. Um, um, I could list a few. Uh, one is um, um, the uh, potential of addressing the problem of non-universality. Uh, what I mean by that is, um, let's say you, you are using a fingerprint system, and let's also assume that there is a, a small fraction of the population that cannot provide good quality prints, uh, perhaps due to dry fingers or some other uh, implicit problems with their, with their finger. Uh, uh, in such a case, uh, you do not want to exclude those users from accessing the biometric system. So if you have uh, a multi-biometric system, then a person who's not successfully enrolled using a fingerprint sensor uh, perhaps can be successfully enrolled using an iris system. And so there is this notion of non-universality. Uh, the second advantage is performance improvement. Uh, when a suitable fusion rule is employed, uh, you can take the evidence of these two modalities, bring them together, and improve the overall recognition performance. Um, and uh, of course, the trade-off is between cost, performance, and time. Uh, because now if you have multiple modalities, uh, it is very likely that you'll have to spend more time collecting the data from the subject prior to uh, the subject accessing the resource that is, uh, that is protected. Uh, but having said that, again, performance improvement is uh, another um, benefit. Uh, the third benefit is robustness to noise. 
Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, consider a subject who is uh, walking through an airport aisle, and uh, let's say there are cameras uh, trained on this aisle, and um, as the subject walks through this, uh, this, this aisle, uh, and you obtain the face image, and let's say also the iris image, you now have two different modalities uh, that can be adaptively used. Uh, because if this person walks to a different environment where you can only obtain the face, you can still perform matching because in the first environment, you acquired both the face and the, and the iris. Uh, so here the goal is to acquire as many traits as possible so that depending upon the context, you can invoke one or two or a subset of the available traits. So that's uh, another uh, significant advantage. Um, and also, uh, there are other types of advantages uh, with respect to, um, uh, to performance, uh, one of which is called as the uh, increasing the degree of freedom or uh, uh, increasing the capacity of a biometric system. What we mean by that is by incorporating multiple traits, you can accommodate more users in the system in such a way that the overlap between subjects is reduced. And so these are some of the advantages of uh, fusion system. At the same time, uh, we have to be mindful of the trade-offs. Uh, again, there is computational requirements which can increase. Uh, there can be the time requirement which can also increase. But again, putting all these things into, uh, into one framework would allow us to benefit from the use of multiple traits.